Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to another episode of the Carmen Ghia Repairs, um, Maintenance, and Improvements series. And so, if you remember the, the last episode, we um, needed to disconnect the uh, uh, shift linkage from the transaxle because. Uh, for those who are just tuning in, our immediate goal right now is to remove the transaxle because we're replacing it uh, with, a, well, not a new one, but a rebuilt one. And so we removed our cells uh, from the battery pack to get access to that uh, coupler so that we could disconnect the shift linkage from the transaxle. And so in this episode, we're going to remove the motor. And so uh, to do that, there's just a couple items we need to remove first. And so one of those is the blower on the top here that's used for cooling. So we have a uh, support mounting uh, connection here and uh, a slip fit on the band here. We've got uh, uh, an electrical connection here that goes to our controller as well as uh, one up in the front there. And so those two connections, electrical connections, you need to remove the uh, blower. And then there's uh, uh, the thermostatic switch and the motor, there's a connection there that you can't see from, from here, but anyway, two uh, spade connections. And that's it. I mean, basically uh, four wires, and this thing is, uh, you know, ready to be removed. And then to actually remove it, just like any other VW-mounted uh, engine, this motor is held on uh, by four bolts. And so we'll remove those and then our motor would be ready to remove. Except our particular situation right here, we have a piece that goes underneath the motor, kind of protects the motor from uh, debris and so forth as well as this uh, enclosure, which keeps our engine compartment nice and clean. What that does is the stock opening is like this. And so we've decreased that gap. So we don't have much room between the end of our motor and our enclosure here. So we haven't removed the motor since we put the enclosure in. Um, and so we've done others, um, uh, but we've never removed them. We, we put them in, this goes in last. So um, we'll see what kind of clearance issues we have. We may need to remove these. Uh, really not that big a deal to remove it. Um, and it's actually a left and right side. So. That's where we're going to start today. And so, like I said, this episode will basically be removing the motor. So, join us as we move forward on our uh, Carmen Ghia project. All right. So, like I said, I disconnected the two wires that go to our thermal switch, disconnected our two cables that go to the uh, controller and so removed our bracket here and so now we're able to remove the blower motor we'll just set it out of the way so now the motor is exposed and ready to be removed with the exception of removing our our cover here so that's what we'll do next we'll pull off this and uh, then we'll be able to drop the motor out. Well, 
We're going to see if we can get it out without removing all of the enclosure here. We've released part of it that will allow us to have access to the bottom of the motor. And this is the way I prefer to install um, the VW and Porsche motors uh, is from the bottom um, using a transmission jack. This allows us to cradle the, the motor using this cradle and we can then adjust the inclination and, uh, and the rotation so it makes it very easy to uh, install a motor using this method as well as removing one and so that's what we're going to do we're going to put this in place under the motor and then we're going to remove the uh, the bolts that are holding this to the transaxle and see if we can get this thing out of here without having to remove our enclosure completely. Um, I, I have my doubts, but you don't know until you try. And uh, trying to take a shortcut here and we'll, we'll see how that works out. Well, so we've got the motor detached. We only had to loosen up the enclosure on the one end, required removal of the deck lid latch here to be able to get a little clearance there so we could raise up this enclosure enough to clear the motor. And even using the full length of the engine bay opening, it's a tight fit. But to mount the uh, motor, uh, our one-piece adapter coupler uses um, a stud, so the stud is threaded into the adapter and then a nut goes on that and holds it to the transaxle. So after removing the nut, we can thread out the stud. That gives us greater clearance and flexibility on removing the motor. So once we clear the splines, we can just slowly bring her down and there we have it one impulse nine motor with uh, clutch and flywheel adapter and everything out so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this uh, off the jack and we'll put it up on the workbench and we'll pull the, the band off and we'll inspect the brushes, blow the motor out, get any brush dust out of there. Although we, we really don't have much dust buildup because we have the blower on here and the internal fan in the motor. So it's always blowing good, good air through the, the motor, which keeps that brake dust or that um, brush dust from building up. So anyway, uh, let's uh, let's hook it up to the cherry picker, and we'll put it up on our workbench and take a closer look at uh, the brushes and commutator and see how it all looks. All right. We've got the motor out and on the workbench. We uh, inspected the brushes. They're wearing evenly and everything looks good. The commutator looks good. And so we thought we'd uh, hook it up, run it up on the bench here with 12 volts. Um, just to hear what it sounds like with no other noise. Nice and smooth and quiet.
here's what we're left with on the car end of things. So we still have to remove the transaxle. We got the motor out of the way. So we're going to need to remove the uh, axles, uh, disconnect the constant velocity joints and, and pull those loose. Um, there's the uh, clutch cable that needs to be removed. Um, there's the uh, reverse light switch. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think we'll be ready to remove it at that point. And so there's the uh, mounts on the rear here. There's two shock mounts on either side and then there's one shock mount on the front of the transaxle. And then it's just a matter of sliding it out and down. So we'll continue to, to make progress. Uh, we're not going to bore you with all the, you know, cranking on every nut and bolt, but give you an idea of the process. Would you like to learn how to convert your vehicle from gas to electric? Well, ev for you has several ways to help you do that. The best way is to attend one of our three-day hands-on conversion workshops where we share with you everything you need to know in order to make uh, good decisions about component choice, uh, component layout, how to wire it, everything from start to finish. And not only do we teach you the things that you need to know, but we also uh, have uh, aids to help you uh, understand what we learn in the classroom. You bet you get to apply it in the workshop. And so we have uh, wiring boards and also in the workshops we convert a Volkswagen sand rail from gas to electric. And so the uh, hands-on experience reinforces everything that you learn in the classroom. So it's a combination of going from the classroom to the shop in three days of good times and learning. Uh, we've had people from all over the world attend the workshops. And so not only do you get to learn how to convert your car from gas to electric, you get to meet some interesting people from all over. That's one way. Another way is that you can purchase our How to Convert from Gas to Electric, the complete video. For those of you who uh, aren't able to make the trek to Shasta Lake, California, uh, you can simply order the video and it too walks you through uh, the process um, from the component level all the way through to the installation. And then we also have a series of uh, YouTube videos. So if you check out the rest of the videos on our YouTube channel, um, or if you go to our website, we have kind of an index there. Um, and so you can pick the topics you want and go directly to it. But they're not as in-depth as the, uh, the uh, complete video. And of course, nothing beats the hands-on experience of the workshop. But whatever works best for you, that's what ev for You is all about. We're not here to sell parts or to sell you anything. We're here to teach you how to convert your vehicle to electric. So that you too can enjoy the benefits of driving an electric vehicle. Hope you continue to follow our, our uh, series on the uh, Carmen Ghia maintenance, uh, repairs, and improvements. And we'll see you next time.